Okay, I think it's a few minutes earlier than usually start, but it seems like we have a pretty good crowd here and everyone's uh, pretty much situated, so I'll go ahead and uh, start by introducing our speaker, Lada Koneva. So she came to the U.S. from Russia in 2013 on a Fulbright grant to actually work in the bioinformatics core, and she worked with Rich McKeegan, who is right here. Um, for nine months, she said, and, and then after that, transitioned into a postdoc position in my lab. And uh, since then, she's been working on analysis of head and neck cancer data. And today, she will be talking about the identification and characterization of genic HPV and race defense in all cancers and all patterns. Thank you very for introduction. And uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, let me start with brief introduction to the head and neck cancer. And uh, this type of cancer is the sixth six most common cancer in the world. This picture, this picture shows incidence in, in mortal, and mortality. And the, by the data of World Health Organization, in 2015, this year, expected more than 740,000 new cases of head and neck cancer and more than 400,000 deaths. And uh, most of the new cases, 75% occur in men. Uh, Head and neck cancer has a poor survival the five, compared to other type of cancer. The five-year survival rate is 50%. The major risk factors is chronic use of tobacco, alcohol consumption, and uh, human papillomavirus infection. <coughs> and this picture presents the major uh, head and neck cancer regions, which include oral cavity and oropharynx, among others. Human papilloma virus is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the world, and this is a diverse and large group of viruses with almost 200 well-characterized types, and 12 of them are high-risk oncogenic HPVs. This picture shows emergent threat of incidence of hum uh, head and neck cancer. Red bars present uh, cervical cancer, and violet bars shows incidence of uh, head and neck cancer, and yellow strips shows uh, cancer related to HPV. We can see that almost all cervical cancer HPV mediated, and a portion of head and neck cancer uh, HPV positive increase and in increasing expected in the future. And uh, incidence of cervical cancer decreased due to a successful uh, screening program. This scheme presents a genome organization of HPV-16. Uh, <coughs> HPV-16 genome comprises long control region and H, uh, genes, eight genes, which are important on different stages of life. Uh, virus life cycle, and here listed uh, main, fu main function of these genes. And for tumor genesis HPV, uh, most important E6 and E7 oncogenes, and E2 normally suppress expression of oncogenes X6 and E7. Uh, target, uh, target for HPV is a squamous epithelium. Uh, especially important uh, basal epithelial cells layer uh, where um, HPV established uh, latent infection after the, inf uh, after the start of the infection. Virus take uh, gain to the depths of epithelium through microwounds, and then virus take advantage of the uh, process of differentiation keratinocytes. And uh, on the Start of infection, virus identified uh, as uh, episomes. Episomes is a circular uh, extra chromosomal HPV DNA. And the uh, critical step in progression to cancer is uh, integration viral DNA to the host genome, uh, to the host cell genome. And uh, when, when uh, Virus integrated, it causes uh, increase of expression A6 and A7, which inhibit uh, tumor proteins, tumor suppressor proteins PRB and P, uh, P, P53, and also uh, mentioned 
to know that uh, human papilloma virus is not cytolytic virus and doesn't cause viremia, so uh, there is no uh, inflammatory response during the um, HPV infection. Uh, is seven mechanism of tumor genesis. Uh, Normal function of retinoblastoma protein is prevent excessive cell growth by inhibiting cell cycle pro progression and the PRB uh, bound with E2F transcription factor and this binding prevent uh, E2F for, from the uh, activation genes involved in replication DNA. But e, when E7 um, dis displaced uh, PRB and E to F not unbound, and this starts gene expression and cell cycle activation and proliferation, and this allowed unchecked cell division. And uh, P53 tumor suppressor is um, the main normal function is respond to DNA damage and. Uh, P53 activates transcription of genes involved in cell cycle, initiate DNA repair system, and initiate apoptosis. And uh, th th this protein is called guardian of the genome. And when E6 binds with uh, P53, it promotes P53 for degradation, and this causes loss of tumor suppression by 53 and uh, genetic instability. Our pharynx is uniquely susceptible to human papilloma virus. Uh, now, in an arbor, in our days, about 90% of oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinomas are HPV related. And uh, in the United States and uh, developed countries, uh, HPV related oropharynx uh, grows. And uh, for example, from 80 years last century, it grows significant to the over than 70% in our days. And worldwide cancer centers report uh, uh, that virus responsible between 45 to 90 percent of oropharyngeal cancers. And this table shows uh, also that uh, oropharyngeal cancers, uh, uh, HPV mediated, more prevalent to compare with uh, cancers or, or, uh, in, in the oral cavity. And most of the Oral pharyngeal cancer is caused by HPV 16, and in oral cavity, higher variability in type of uh, HPV. Um, so, goals for our study. Uh, first of all, our aim was to find the uh, sites of HPV integration. Uh, in our samples, HPV positive head and neck primary tumors from RNA seq data. And uh, to answer this question, uh, next question is Are these integration sites re recurrent across individuals? Do they cluster within a region of the in the same individual? Do these integration events have a tendency to occur in any particular type of genome regions, like uh, repetitive regions or common fragile sites? Are these uh, is there any functional or pathway commonalities among these host genes harboring an integration sites? Previously, integration in head and neck cancer were, in, were investigated in TCJ samples. And for example, in this, uh, this uh, paper, they analyzed a lot of uh, TCJ, HP, uh, TCJ uh, head and neck uh, tumors, and they found HPV positive were 36 tumors, and uh, integration positive amongst, um, amongst them 25 tumors. Uh, most of the, almost all cases, every cases of integration occurred within or near protein coding transcript. And uh, they found that integrations were associated with alteration in DNA copy number, mRNA transcript abundance and splicing, inter- and intrachromosomal rearrangements. Many of these events involved the genes with documented roles in cancer. And uh, they found the cancer with integrated versus not integrated HPV displayed different patterns of DNA mutilation and human and uh, viral gene expression. But they didn't find didn't find any commonalities in function of the host genes with integration 
events. Uh, here presented, this picture presents our samples. So we analyzed uh, overall 84 HPV positive samples, and every track, track presents demographic or clinical pathological characteristic of samples. We found 50 samples were integration positive and 34 samples were integration negative. This track presents samples by experiment, 66 samples were from TCJ, 18 samples from EOM. This present uh, by gender, and we can see that most of the samples from the male, and this by anatomical site, and most of the samples from oral pharynx, so some of them from oral cavity in a group of integration positive. These two, um, these two tracks present by stage of the cancer and by smoking status. And this by uh, distribution of the HPV type in our samples. For example, for integration positive samples, most of the, most of the tumors were uh, mediated by HPV-16, one sample was, were, was HPV-18, and three and five HPV-35 and 33. And we didn't find differences by all these characteristics between groups of integration positive and integration negative uh, samples. <clears throat> for our analysis for detection viruses, integration, uh, virus integration sites, we used this software, VirusSeq, which were described in this paper. And uh, VirusSeq works with both whole genome and whole transcriptome sequencing data. <coughs> Input for this tool is pair and reads in FASTQ format, and uh, raw reads are aligned to the reference genome using mosaic alignment software. Uh, here I tried to present a pipeline for virus seek, uh, in a scheme, and uh, virus seek works uh, has two main stages. First stage is it's a virus detection from NGS data, in our, from RNA seq in our data, and the first step raw reads aligned to the human reference genome, and uh, here is a subtraction of human reads uh, on the first step, and uh, those reads which were didn't align to the human reference, I try to show that uh, it's uh, expected that should be aligned to the integrated virus intervals. This reads, uh, so it's uh, non-human reads collected, uh, gathered, and mapped to the comprehensive database for viruses. Uh, VirusSeq used uh, uh, virus genome from uh, genome information broker for viruses with a lot of virus genomes. <coughs> and after, after alignment to the virus reference. Uh, next step is a quantification of the virus representation uh, by count of overall mapped reads to the viruses, and empirical cutoff is uh, 1,000 mapped reads. And uh, the second stage is identification of virus integration sites, and uh, here the first step is a merge um, human reference genome, and chromosome virus, or chromosome 25, which present concatenated sequences of all viruses detected on the pre previous step. And uh, this uh, new reference, which they call HG19 virus, uh, to this new reference, uh, raw reads mapped again without uh, computational sub subtraction in this time, and those reads which were mapped to the human genome with end uh, and with other end to the chromosome 25 were called uh, discordant read pairs, and then they annotated with human and viral, uh, viral genes. Uh, virus seek used uh, for reports fusion. Uh, how long does it take for one scan? For one okay. for for one what for one sample? It takes uh, one and a half day. Yes. So previous and previous page. Do you tend to previous and previous page? The page before the previous. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. This page. Why don't you first? 
find where the virus gene is in the transcript and then that the transcript to the human genome. Because the virus genome is much smaller. So if you do it in the reverse order, it will dramatically improve your performance. Uh, you don't necessarily sorry. know which virus you're looking for. But here she already knows HPV virus. So she already know which genome virus genome she was looking at. Well, there's still multiple different possible HPV genes, but you can concatenate yeah. them. Yeah. 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 And it'll still be way smaller than the human genome. Yeah. <coughs> you get the simple answer is that's not how virus seek works. <laughs> <laughs> it's not their software. But, uh, okay. Somebody else. So no source code. Okay. Well, they probably have source code. I guess recoding it would take more than a day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, for, to report uh, fusion candidates, uh, virus seek used in. Um, Besides discordant, discordant supporting the read pairs also used junction spanning reads, and this picture shows difference between them. And uh, cutoff for reporting uh, fusion between uh, virus and host, uh, at least four discordant uh, supporting reads and at least one junction spanning reads. And uh, to test the accuracy of virus seek, uh, authors uh, of this software analyzed R RNA seq data of 239 cases cases of head and neck squamous cell carcinomas from the TCGA. They found 36 cancers and 24 of them were integration positive. Main limitation for virus seq is a uh, virus seq does require virus sequences as a pre prerequisite input. But um, it, 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 will, it will miss novel viruses that are not in virus database. But for our, for our goals, it's not important to, we didn't look for new viruses. Uh, also, there are some alternative software for detection uh, virus integration and in NGS data. And we uh, consider some of them. And, uh, for, for some of them, for example, HPV detector didn't work. Virus finder I used for uh, verification integration in one sample. And the uh, main reason why we used virus seq is because uh, the author applied virus seq for analysis of TCG head and neck samples. And we used the finding from this study in our analysis. I, I mean, we used the gene with integration in our analysis. So, how finding this virus seek? Integrations occur in 50% out of, of uh, 84 samples. We found integrations in 83 host human genes and number of insertional breakpoints 271 and breakpoints uh, within uh, E6 and E7 HPV oncogenes were more common. And I will show it on the next slide. Just this, this is part of uh, <coughs> output table. It's just to present how, how looks output from the uh, virus seek. This picture present uh, gene expression and uh, integration sites in several UM samples. Actually, here is uh, seven UM samples which were infected with HPV-16 genome and the uh, expression into this, this uh, HPV-16 genes. Um, every track presents every samples and this low track is summary over overall of these seven samples and for every Sample this low tracks present sites of integration in this uh, cer certain sample, and here or, <laughs> uh, this uh, size of these points demonstrate how many um, discordant reads support this uh, integration sites. So we can uh, the, the more discordant reads count, the more confident about uh, integration sites. In, integration breakpoints in, th in this site. And uh, from this picture, we can see that expression of E6 and E7 with most integration sites, and it's a 
elevated in all samples, expression of E2 uh, viral gene uh, were low or almost zero in some samples, and this is in, in, in agreement with a theory of uh, tumor genesis for HPV, because uh, high expression in 67 uh, progress to uh, neoplasm, to progression to tumor. This picture uh, shows uh, integration sites through the human genome. It's uh, like a summary of our uh, work. And uh, <coughs> here is shown, um, uh, dots shows uh, integration sites from TCG samples, and triangles shows integration sites from UM samples, and colors of dots and triangles shows uh, anatomical uh, anatomical site for tumors, and uh, and uh, the name of the genes uh, where within uh, which uh, virus were integrated, and uh, on the chromosomes, red and blue uh, regions. It's a uh, red. It's for acidicalin induced uh, common fragile sites, and uh, blue for non fragile regions. Uh, I'm going to come back to this picture, but a couple of slides about uh, common fragile sites. Uh, fragile sites are specific class sites that pre pre preferentially exhibit gaps and breaks on metaphase chromosomes following partial inhibition of DNA synthesis. And uh, common fragile sites present in all individuals, and they are component of normal chromosome structure. Previously, in the study of cervical cancer, we demonstrated that HPV integrations associated uh, occur within CFS. And, uh, for example, in this P um, study, they analyzed uh, many uh, cervical cancer and displeasure, and they demonstrated enrichment of integration sites with several genomic instability-related elements, and uh, shown on this picture with STR sign line, and with fragile X break point, and uh, so on. And we made analysis association integration sites with CFS, and this uh, table shows results, so how many break points were, um, fall in common fragile sites and in non-fragile regions, and we used a proportional test for, to find association, and we didn't find association integration sites with aphidically induced common fragile sites in our 50 uh, samples with integration. And uh, so back to this picture, which show integration sites in human genome. Uh, I want to pay your attention, so in some in some integration sites, uh, most interesting thing is that uh, integration occurs in, uh, in, different, in different tumors, different samples, and very tiny, very close to each other in some regions. So it's a recurrent uh, integration sites uh, through the samples. And uh, they are highlighted with the red uh, circles. And with the blue circles, it's a integration, clustering of integration. So it's in the same sample, but uh, breakpoints clusters in the gen genome. And a uh, couple next slides, it's an example of this uh, recurrent integration in details. For example, on chromosome 1, this track shows uh, integration within uh, about 100 KB, and I highlighted that it's two different uh, different samples, integration in two different samples. And the similar situation on chromosome 13. Here is uh, about 700 KB and integration in three different samples. For, from the same anatomical site, from oral cavity, uh, and the pre previous uh, from oral pharynx. And uh, here it's an uh, interesting case too, because here is uh, integration in uh, within uh, about 200 KB, and uh, integration occurs in three, three different samples in three different anatomical sites from oral pharynx, larynx, on, and oral cavity. And this picture shows a uh, clustering of integration. It's uh, in integration in BIRC3 in one sample, just shows that uh, breakpoints clusters. 
And the next step of our analysis, we perform analysis of protein interaction networks. And for construction, for, for, for this analysis, we used uh, MetaCore software, Django, and we used um, 83 uh, host genes hybrid integration uh, of viruses. And uh, for construction of this network, we used uh, shortest past algorithm with one step in interaction, direct interaction between nodes. And we can see that in this in this, in, in this network, some of the nodes uh, uh, connected with uh, direct uh, links between them, and they uh, connected in uh, link in hi highly connected mm -hmm. subnetwork. Uh, actually, in this subnetwork, 56 uh, proteins from the uh, over the out of uh, 83 for uh, as an input. And here is a highly connected subnetwork, and we can see that in this subnetwork, uh, some of the proteins or network objects are hubs, and this table presents the number of ages uh, for these hubs. And uh, this ETS um, and P53 and uh, KLF5, HMF23, and CTGF. This, this, this it's a, actually uh, metacore use uh, it's a complex protein how I understand how metacore works where is p53 here p63 p63 I told p53 sorry p63 do I understand correctly? <clears throat> so you had 84 genes that were target of uh, inter integration, and these are the 53 that the, where there's evidence of their interaction, the, the subset of ones that are interacting? We have 53 genes as an input, and 50, or 83 genes as an input, and 56 of them were connected. And these are the 56? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get understand your answer. So, what's the relationship between P63 and P53? Are they the same thing, different thing, or what? And also, HPV targets P53. So uh, P53 and P63, uh, I just showed the. Uh, this is created by genes that had integrations of the virus, correct? Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. So, if P53 didn't have a, an integration, P it won't be on. So yeah, yeah. Why do you say P53 will, won't have any integration because it will be very surprising because the HPV virus will target the mm -hmm. The virus doesn't target one of the proteins expressed by the virus interacts. Yeah. HPV causes the degradation of P53. So I guess there wouldn't. It like it's, it's already it's already knocking it down that way. It doesn't need to integrate into it to knock it down even further. Of course, P53 is important across all types of cancers, but P63 it's in the same family as P53. But in particular, P63 is known to be important in cervical cancers, which are also caused by HPV. And in cervical cancers, HP, P63. Sorry. <clears throat> has been seen to have multiple integration events in, in cervical cancer. So <clears throat> it's not surprising, I guess, for us to see it here as a as a hub. Well, well also, it's possible that P53 is an integration site. You just didn't see it in your data set. Maybe. I mean, I mean each, each cell in each tumor is going to be random. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so what we're seeing is the integration events that had selective pressure, I guess, to become a tumor. Right. Yep. Uh, and another question in your virus scan or virus screen and the exam, do we look through all the virus in the database or you just look at your HPV virus screen? Uh, look at all of them, right? Uh, do you mean a data, database where we align our, our virus? No. no, this database includes all the viruses, not only HPV. Okay. And uh, so all. Any integration of genes not from HPV? Uh, 
I didn't find any integration in other genes. It wasn't uh, it wasn't integrated. Uh, it wasn't reported by virus just integration in HPV. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, and uh, then we uh, look at the network statistic for uh, for our network, and we found interesting thing that uh, that our uh, our input uh, genes were enriched very significantly with head and neck neoplasm. And here is a common uh, 33 genes, which were the same for our samples. And it's interesting, this enrichment for head and neck. And among these 33 genes, 25 were in our highly connected subnetwork. And the lung neoplasms is interesting because there's some similarities between head and neck cancers and lung cancers. So basically, you're confirming what is what, what was already known. So your data is confirmed. No, no, no. no. This is definitely not already. Not. It was not known. The previous paper who looked at HPV integrations and in neck cancer did not find any commonalities among the genes oh. that had an integration. Method. Right. Sorry, that's not what I meant. I meant that you okay. were really pleased to see that you're picking up some yeah, known of uh, <laughs> terms, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, but oh. it hasn't previously been found. Yep. And this table shows a very, very short summary for top, uh, top genes in our network. And uh, all of them related to cancer. And for TP53, uh, as Marine mentioned, it was found in many HPV-related cancer, in anogenital uh, cervical cancer, and the neck cancer and TP, TP53 uh, responsible for development, uh, epider epidermis development. And Fox are strongly implicated in different type, type of cancer. <coughs> CTGF uh, can work as oncoprotein or tumor suppressor. And KLF important for any, many processes in cell. And conclusion. So we identified HPV integration events in 50 RNA-seq head and neck tumors. Detected viral integration events were widespread across the human genome with a few hot spots in of recurrent integration in some genic regions. We didn't find association with, of integration with uh, aphidicaline induced common fragile sites. And host gene harboring uh, viral integration statistically enriched for genes known as important in head and neck neoplasm. I thank all, all, all members of my lab, Marine, and all others. Thank you. So I'm curious that men have the head and neck cancer much more frequently than, than yeah, women. And it's true. women have cervical cancer. Is that anatomy, or is that uh, is that an environmental effect? Does men it, tend to smoke more, or is, what, why is that? Smoke more? I'm not, I don't know. It's not uh, it's not known yet. But I read some uh, hi hypothesis exp trying to explain increasing uh, head and neck cancer, and they uh, bind it with uh, change in uh, sexual behavior and uh, with uh, how I understood that in 17 years, uh, uh, how to say, uh, tonsil ectomia was, uh, didn't use uh, in, among the child pop in children population. And this may be effect uh, that there in children. Yeah. Any equations that in Y chromosome? Sorry? Any equations that in Y chromosome? In Y chromosome? No. We didn't fight. Uh, is there were integration in X chromosome, but no one in Y chromosome? I was thinking maybe it, maybe the cervix is a better host than uh, than the than the neck. But if you don't have a cervix, then, then <laughs> it goes and actually for, for cervix it's more easy. It's it's very 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 easy um, test. Uh, if, uh, how to say? Testing for service cancer more easy because it's uh, 
pop smear, it's a quite uh, easy procedure. But it's not so easy to get a sample from the throat, for example. And uh, so patients uh, take for the help in the late, uh, uh, late stages of the cancer, in, may, in many cases with head and neck, it's uh, defense on the cervical. Could you go back to slide 27, the gene network? I'm going to the So, um, the theory here is that the gene integrations are indirectly down-regulating TP53. That, that, that's, that's the mechanism that we're speculating, right? No. HPV itself <laughs> uh, leads to the degradation of P53. P53. These genes don't necessarily have anything. <clears throat> say, the, say the mechanism again. What's the mechanism? So what's what's causing the cancer? <laughs> what's causing the cancer? Oh. Well, 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 it, well the, 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 the first hit is with P53. Well, with P53 and RB, those those two big hits. Can you go back to the earlier slides where you show that? Number one. <laughs> yeah, so so E6 and E7 are the two main oncogenic HPV yep. proteins. E7 binds to SPRB. RB and targets it for, well, it, it keeps it yeah, from acting a bit. It also it targets for degradation. Yeah, targets PRB. it for degradation. And well. this transcription factor promote to. Yes, yeah, so that division. leads to cell cycle activation and proliferation. There's one hit. The next. E6, the other oncogenic protein, um, binds to, to P53 and inhibits P53 from its activation um, or activity and leads to its degradation. So, and so there you're, you're avoiding apoptosis and mm -hmm. when you have DNA damage. But, but this, is, this is the virus yeah, working at a protein level. This is not the integration part right, of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, uh, but, but even with those two hits, you know, the great majority of people that have HPV just clear it and never get cancer. Um, HPV is very prevalent. I mean, like, I don't know, a third of the population. Yeah. So the question is, is it an additive effect? Is it loss of function due to integration site as well as the protein effect? Right. So, I thought it was interesting that we didn't see an enrichment with the common fragile sites because you would see that if it if it was kind of just any random integration event that led to cancer. Instead, we're seeing a huge enrichment in specifically head and neck cancer genes, which means maybe it, it waits till it gets a really a key hit integration event and then it leads to cancer. So therefore, the integration happens because at protein level you can knock get rid of all the proteins in front of them, so they do it at the DNA level. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a complex system of events, right, that end up leading to it. So I think you don't think you can yes. say it takes any one certain pathway. Yes, please. So, um, just actually relate to the uh, <coughs> bias in, in, in male. So uh, for, the, for those genes or the, the re for those regions that have integrated glands, could you look at how those genes kind of be differentially expressed between male and females? Actually, because this actually happened in some of those um, for complex diseases like lupus. So we've been trying to see if those uh, lupus child like more happening in, in females. Mm. And then we found those sites uh, that are susceptibility low side for, for lupus tend to have like a differential expression between. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Um, it's not That's really like, interesting. We haven't yeah. looked at any. Because, I mean, there's no integration in sex chromosomes, but but there's still a lot of different expression genes between. Yeah. That's a really and interesting and idea. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have very few females, yeah. so we're probably not going to have the sample size. Are these all Caucasians? Um, because actually, I think, I it, think in, so. in Southeast uh, China or Southeast Asia, there are a lot of much higher prevalence in having that cancer. So I'm just wondering if there's any Caucasian specific effect. Oh, those tend to be HPV negative, yeah. though, because I know there's a lot of betel nut chewing, if anyone's heard of that. And, it, um, yeah, and it's caused by tobacco. Yeah. There are also cultures that, cultures that still have a larger prevalence of yes. smoking. Yes, it's true. Yeah, yeah. And they probably also have the HPV cancer, but it's a much lower percent. 
That's the fact it's not 27 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so what I'm looking at are is a set of genes that um, that uh, where there was integration points. Is that correct? Yes. So I guess what I'm angling towards is um, <clears throat> could you take like the the, the top one percent downregulated genes and chuck those into uh, into this analysis to see like okay these are the genes that are integrated that have integration sites these are the genes that were significantly downregulated and here's where here's where those connections here's where those hubs are here's how that mechanism is actually occurring downregulated in in the total in the HPV yeah. 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 tumors oh, why not upregulated Oh, yeah. uh, I was. Yeah. Well, I guess I was looking for. I was, I'm still looking for TP53. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. You have a fixie. I'm on that TP53 is not downregulating the expression. In, in fact, one analysis we saw it go up because yeah. the cell is trying to make up for yeah. the fact yeah. that it's yeah. being degraded. Oh, but it's it's downstream genes are downstream. Yeah. Did you look to see if these are drug targets? Known drug targets? Mm, yes, I looked. I just. Mm. Good question. Did you look? That, that is I, I. Click the little uh, drug icon when you're looking at. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah, let's say it is. Let's say PBX is drug target. What's that drug going to do? Ah, so the the advantage to looking at the drugs, there's a couple advantages. There there might actually be drugs that are already used for treating cancer, mm -hmm. and, and so. This could help to help you to understand why that drug works uh, in cancer, assuming that it does. Um, also, uh, you might find drugs that are that are not currently used in tr cancer treatment, but they could be used in this cancer treatment because they're already known drugs, you know, safe and effective for bipolar disorder, but you know, you could use them for treating cancer. That might be a little, a little bit of a stretch. The third option is that um, you might see off-target effects or side effects. Uh, you might be able to explain or predict and prevent side effects by knowing the interactions that are uh, for the drugs that you're that you're using. But if BTS is an integration point, you've got a drug. I mean, what you're trying to do is intercept the the, the downstream. Or effect. yeah, intercept yeah. it somehow. So the other genes point. that you'd want to reactivate, not yeah. Not inhibit mm -hmm. since most drugs inhibit, but so it would have to target, I guess, a upstream. Yeah. Yeah. So are there any hypotheses on how the integration? So I think it's very striking, right? So how uh, you found this uh, head and neck cancer related genes, and you know, among your you know, genes that have integration sites, right? But uh, mm -hmm. how, how does the, you know, virus know what to target then? You know, what, what's the <laughs> theory on that? I mean, it's like, do they get any preferential sort of, you know, is there yeah. some mechanism that gives them some sort of advantage? Yeah, yeah I don't know. For this gene? Yeah, the ones For, from the, the cervical cancer. Like from virus standpoint, I guess. From the cervical cancer, it was not uh, known with, that uh, integration is a random event and right. it can be integrated in any uh, site, but uh, selection. Um, but not all of them lead to cancer, mm. basically. Right. right. Yeah, so right. I mean, cancer can develop 20 years after the person gets infected with HPV. That's true. Right, 15, 20 years. And so somewhere along those years, there's, there's going to be lots of random integration events. Cells. Eventually, one gets it. Okay. But I guess the interesting thing is now we didn't detect an integration in all of the tumors. So right. sometimes it appears it can lead to cancer even without an integration. Yep. It's yeah. interesting too. Or something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does HPV integrate randomly and cause a bunch of other diseases that we haven't looked at yet? Uh, cervical and genital head and neck, and uh, describing. Um, but, 
but if it randomly integrates, uh, it, it could be targeting a lot of different kinds of genes. And well, we, we no, it's a, this epithelium. epithelium. So it's chromos epithelium is a target for HPV integration, for HPV infection. Sorry. So <clears throat> is any uh, difference between the <coughs> population or the HPV population and the <clears throat> HPV population? No, no, no. The, the, the host. The host. Human yeah. population. Are there, yeah. are there differences that change susceptibility? Yeah, correct. Human population? <clears throat> so are there any associations with like GWAS type of things to look at variability in the population? Human population. <coughs> Is there are there enough cases yeah. that they've Be, done? Besides human uh, uh, population, HPV have a different occurrence uh, among different populations. Like the, if you construct the genealogy tree between different populations, you have a similar uh, population. Do they have different prevalence? In uh, no, uh, that means uh, like. I don't know a lot about that literature. I mean, HPV infections will have to do with sexual practices of the population because um, it's a sexually transmitted disease. Um, I don't know if, if because yeah, there's know. a lot of other strains that don't cause cancer. Yeah. Right. yeah. So um, but they can cause like genital warts and things like that. So there is only one or two strains specifically cause the HPV. Uh, she listed cancer. them towards the beginning. A dozen, but HPV 16 is the, the strongest one. So like half. So the HPV vaccine, that's, well, there's been two iterations now of HPV vaccines. The first one, I think, just targeted 16 and 18. And the, and the second yeah. one, I remember. 18, 16. So it targets the first six. For four, for four HPV types. Oh, just four H? I thought it was six HPV types. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the next vaccine, they, they, most recent one they developed gets more and that they think will present prevent 95% of cervical cancers mm -hmm. but um, it might not prevent quite as high of a percent of head and neck cancers because the ratio of HPV types is slightly different in the study so now my second question is have you compared the uh, integration point with the HPV or HCV no, we didn't compare it. So then it is kind of a hotspot for the all virus combination or integration. No specific for HPV. I don't think we have the sample size for that. Yeah. Because most of them are HPV 16. But that's a interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, the or, so the oral cancers are appear to be targeted in terms of integration, and the cervical cancers are random or appear to be. Random. Not completely random, okay. but they don't seem to be as targeted to right. specific um, Is there a... I'm wondering about uh, an exposure effect. So do we know how many integrations tend to happen in, um, in cervical cancers? Uh, are we missing significance just because there tends to be more integrations per tumor cell in cervical cancers than in... Uh, yeah, possibly. In oral cancers? In that one um, paper for cervical cancers, they found more integrations per sample than we found. But, yeah, but in cervical cancer, it's study a lot of years. It's more, it's more yeah, studied. Much better study. Much better study to compare with head and neck cancer. But a lot yeah. of samples the studying. Right, so statistical power should pull those things out yeah. regardless. Great, thank, thank you. you.